so analyst, the West Indies decided to change the strategy. A strategy that worked for the bowlers in the first match. The bowler them run in, bend them back, hit the pitch hard and got the wickets. This time around, the man them decides if he take pace off at every delivery. 20 overs, 20 times 6 slower balls. But when you expect that, spec um, Kurt, the man them tired. Hold him for tired. Yo, yo, test certified. What are you talking about? Welcome, Sports Nation, to Sports DTM, the sports channel where we call sports down the middle. You can expect the latest in sports news, views, and reviews from our resident analysts. No sports topic is too controversial, and no team or player is above criticism. So just smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on our balanced offering of riveting sports content. And don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Welcome to Sports DTM. Greetings Sports DTM fans and welcome to another episode of Sports Down the Middle, your channel of undiluted sports content. Raymond, Adrian and I are here to talk about the just concluded match between West Indies and England, the second of the five match series and the boy oh boy back to square one, back down to earth. I don't know if I want to say back to rock bottom but West Indies won the toss guys and decided to hold first and we, we anticipated that would have been the best decision england 200 171 for eight of 20 overs west indies falling short 170 for eight of their 20 overs adrian what's what's what happened what what, got, what happened in this well well kurt um make no mistake about it England won by one run, but it, the scoreline looked a lot closer thanks to a cameo at the end by Akila Thien and uh, Ramara Shepard, um, both players knocking 44 apiece off um, 16 and 28 balls respectively. I mean, the West Indies got um, clobbered from the start. They were being hit all over the park by Roy, Ali, uh, um, and, and did well um, also. And they were just, it was just a total turnaround from the day before where England was out for 103. England was in full command with about five overs remaining before Hussein and Shepard uh, came in and made a real scare of it. And it's not like the English weren't trying, but we needed one run. Look along the cards, we had um, the captain. Karen Pollard, after calling out the batters, <laughs> going for one run. Jason Ola could not replicate his, his um, batting form from the day before. One run. Brandon King, a duck. Before you go into the, 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 the performance of the top order, Adrian, let me hear Raymond coming on this because. When the West Indies bowled, and you mentioned the 103 that were bowled England out for in the match before, the bowlers were running in, hitting the wickets hard with the ball, getting some movements, and they attacked the English batters. And they bowled them out for 103. In this match, I don't know who come up with them strategy, yeah, but the bowlers decided to take pace off the ball. I don't know if they were in collusion with the... The, 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 the man who fixed the pitch, Raymond, I don't know where the strategy is. So maybe it's the, the, the it, man it, who it, prepared the pitch. It, it has to be. A little birdie told him that this is how the pitch was prepared, clearly. And when a little birdie sing, they act accordingly and change the strategy. Oh boy, did the little birdie sell them shot? Because clearly the pitch was not inside that way. And so it almost seemed like a complete strategy change. And resulted in problems but boy it, it it's, it's a complete turnaround in a sense um from what happened in the first game from a bowling perspective and apparently since that they, i wouldn't want to say the bowl has created that problem but they sure as hell thought so based on their response in how they went about trying to get this <laughs> run it, they, they, they went about it as if all right let me correct the mistake i have made and the bat the, the top of the batsmen were pretty much spectators Adrian, 
as you mentioned, Karen Pollard um, calling out the batters, right? The strategy worked in the match before. The same venue, the strategy worked. And he spoke about the players not being mentally and technically ready, right? At what point in this 20 over bowling innings that you realize that this strategy where we're trying for this match now work and let us change it? Because they continue the entire 20 overs bowling slower balls. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you'd expect that uh, it's a captain's responsibility to pull his troops aside and say, look, uh, we start off this strategy. England are um, plummeting people left, right, and center. You expect that the captain would say, look, let's change the strategy here. Let's um, increase the tempo. Let's see if we can actually do um, you know, a turnaround from what we're doing right now. I mean, if you look at the figures, we're seeing all pretty well. Uh, three overs, one wicket, 15 runs. Cottrell, one over, 23 um, runs. Um, so you ask yourself, the, what, three overs rather, um, one wicket, 23 runs. And so you ask yourself the question, apart from the um, obvious one over where Fabian Allen got um, plummeted, exacerbated the scoreline, Jason Holler did reasonably well. So you ask yourself, what, when, the, when the West Indies players, what, why didn't they look at these players in terms of those who were bowling well and try to utilize that strategy? I mean, why didn't they take over the same type of form from the match before and actually put more pace um, on it, right? Um, it just didn't come together for them. They looked like they were all out of sorts. England was able to dominate the game. And it was a, it's a far gap between 103 runs and 171 runs. Pressure was on the table right from the get-go. Uh, Raymond, we were impressed with the way they started in the first game. But in this particular match, it looked like a totally different team, especially when they field. They were sloppy in the field, they drop a couple of catches. I mean, it went down pretty fast. Yeah, it, it appears that they take a lot of things for granted. Um, they almost felt like too comfortable. And given the, the success of the first game, they felt like, you know, we, we have England beat, you know. So we we're able to probably change up strategy and um, pretty much feel as if, Whatever runs England put up, we, 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 there's a strong possibility that we could possibly hit it off. And we almost could contain England to below 150. So that, that was a feeling they had, except that they went about it in a nonchalant manner. And as such, you pretty much had the, this score ballooning to that point. And not to mention the change up of the strategy or the bowling strategy, but the, where they, they reduce the pace. That definitely changed a lot of things. Um, so they the score balloon and they end up chasing the game. And 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 Kurt, uh, just to also add to that, the, the, the question must be asked, right? You have Odin Smith in the lineup, he has pace. Um, how many um um big um over did he bowl today? I'm looking, I'm searching. Zero. Uh, zero overs. Is he a batsman? Is he a bowler? Um, how is it that you can have um all these other bowlers coming for him and he doesn't bowl one over. Is he injured? Somebody needs to explain that to me because probably that's a part of the taking off pace strategy. And I don't know what the answer to that is. Maybe he's injured or as we spoke about earlier. Anyway, Adrian, we're going to look at the way the batters perform, especially the top order batsmen. Again, the, the top order never performed or did anything to support the power hitters. And that is probably a strategy that would work in a game like this when them chasing over 150. De definitely. Definitely, Kurt. Um, a complete reversal from the first T20. Um, Brandon King didn't get off one ball, um, a duck. Shy Hope, nine balls, uh, two runs. And um, Puran and Bravo were just way too slow um, out of the power play. You have to get those ones um, going very early. Kieran Pollard, we heard him complaining about the batters not performing, not being mentally tough. Well, he hasn't come to the party. Uh, one run. Jason Hola, 
They expected him to at least replicate um, his performance from the match before, one run, and the only saving grace in the midst of this was Ramara Shepard and Akil Hussain, who had uh, really fire shots at the, at the back end of um, the match, scoring, each scoring for the four runs, 28 and 16 runs, 16 balls respectively. They did um, absolutely well, even though the West Indies, with five, week, five uh, overs to go, was looking like they were all out of the match. And so it's creditable to, for those young batters to actually do really well to allow the West Indies to almost bring it over the line. One run, Pollard, one run, Older, one run. <laughs> West Indies lost the match by one run. <laughs> Raymond, uh, him, him started Pollard uh, or end with Pollard, one run. And at 50 for four when Pollard got out, we, we would have called it a yam swing, right? A big old yam swing. Like, yeah. There is Michael Olden comments keep popping up every time I see shots like this. Uh, brother, it was over from then. Yeah, so, the, so it looked like Michael Olden speak on his game and it actually haunt him from ever since. Um, it needed to stabilize a bit, so he's so he only faced four ball, right? Four, and so that never need for for swing out. You get you get a chance to catch up. You probably get a chance to catch up as soon as him bowl a bad ball. Remember, you know, he was one of the players who actually, well, the person who said that you need to have some sort sort of mental condition and stuff like that. But facing four balls and 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 swinging out like that and only put up one run on the board. It's really disappointing as a captain. And as I say, I tried to defend him a couple of times, but this is kind of unacceptable. Even though we understand it's T20, T20 cricket and you pretty much need to, to swing us, but you have to choose your shot then. It definitely. And and as I say, if he actually did put on probably one more run, you see we'd have a totally different game. But, but you know, that's that's how it go. Um, as for Jason Ola being at home, we expected him to actually, you know, so so this might just be the one bad game. Played well, bowl well, um, and and so uh, having him having to bat now, it just never come together for him. And so this this I hope that this is his bad game, and for the rest of the games, remaining games, he's able to give his fellow countrymen a good a good showing and a good representation too. So this is your one game, sir, that you actually have. Um, so it's not about bowling alone, but you actually have to put it down with a bat too. And because clearly the top order, now give the luxury of not being able, not being able to, to to probably sit on your your laurel and not put up some runs on the board. So when when you look at it in the context of this game, Raymond, and the way Pollard came out, the the. They were struggling. They started out poorly at six for two. Bravo and Puran tried to put it together at 47 when um, Puran got out. The captain came out 47 for three. I mean, I, I don't want to go back in there, but if persons out there asking why we're so, being so hard on Jason Older, for instance, he's batting at number six in this T20 team, right? Shepard Smith Allen probably should be batting before him, but he's batting at number six. So clearly the selectors, the coach, the captain, all of them see him as a number six batsman in the in this 2020 game, this new era, batting at number six. You have to do better than one single digit one half six and you get caught and bowl. You don't know, one silly shot. Yeah, so you're you're right. Um, clearly, based on the performance from the last game, him get promoted in a sense, and so you find him coming up more up in the order. Um, you're right. I I almost expected Allen to to be playing at that to be batting up at that point, but based on whole the performance that he was able to 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 replace Allen and play that at bat at six. Um, but the expectation is that. He should have to be rewarded for um for his performance in the in the first game. He should actually be Mind able bowling. to put on more runs, right? 
more for his bowling though, um, Ray. Um, I mean, the, the, the truth is that um, he hasn't been batting very um, exceptionally well for the last um, couple of um, games. I mean, he, he hasn't been bowling exceptionally well. Yeah, no, 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 um, even though Odin Smith did not um, do very well um, today, um, he had been batting from the Ireland series coming up and probably should have been ahead of a, um, even a older. Um, then, obviously, players such as, um, surprise, surprise, if Akilah San can hit a 44 or 16, um, then certainly he's showing that he has a lot more temperament. But the captain is also um, woefully off. As the captain, you have to show some leadership in terms of how you approach uh, the game. And as such, uh, from the team was crumbling away, you know, 40 and 50 and uh, wickets were, were falling. You have to then settle down a little bit and then try to press home the advantage. Recoup, you know, get yourself together and then press home because obviously we're losing from the power plane. Puran, 24 off, uh, 22 balls, not bad, but here in the power plane, it has to be a little better. But they, have, they may have been shaken up by the early, the lot of early wickets of King and Hope, and as such himself and Bravo were probably trying to rebuild the um the innings. But after that, Pollard, Holder, senior players have to do a lot better than that. Well, unfortunately, Adrian, I don't want to say this, but it's clear that the tail start at, at Pollard. And when you have Pollard, I don't oh, know, is no. he a specialist? Is a specialist batsman? The all rounders start there, right? Pollard, older shepherd. Come on, we need some specialist batters to hold the innings together. And clearly, Pollard is not one of them. So I can safely say the tail start at number five. The, the, the specialist, the other specialist batsman would have been around. A lot, couple of them are unfit and were unable to be selected um, based on the yo yo test um, that the West Indies has and their fitness policy. Uh, but excellent performance by Shepard and Hussein at the end. We, they scored 59 runs off the last three overs to pull West Indies close and make the, the records look um, presentable because we know watching the game, the match they done from both. West Indies were 50, 65 for seven, but they for some, well, Power eating, 28 off the last over, 23 off the, the 17th over. The one, the 19th over, I mean, eight runs. But excellent performance by the two. We hope that they will bat earlier before the captain in the next game. But quickly, what's, what do what you expect of the team in the next game? Well, um, I am we're hopeful that again, they'll win the toss. We're hopeful that you'll have a better start than we'd have had before. That blip at the, the top, top of the batsman, you're hoping that they'll do better. We're hopeful that um, the captain will be demoted down the order and um, some of the <laughs> other um, batsmen will be promoted up. You know, to kind of bring some stability. And we're hoping that um, Odin Smith, one of the fast bowlers, genuine um, fast bowlers, he's an all rounder, but much faster than some of the other bowlers. Would actually get if it's even one or two overs. Something has got to be wrong. If a, a, a pace bowler like that or somebody with such speed can't get an over in this match and you're running 171 runs. Raymond. Yeah, so win the toss and, and, and let's get back to the first game strategy. Get them with pace, get the ball swinging all over. And as well as change up the lineup. Clearly, you know, I, I you know, I hate to agree with Kurt that the, the the tail end starts there. Change it up. Clearly, we don't want the tail end starting there. And as such, we pretty much want um, some of these other batsmen coming further up and batting earlier. So if if there's any issue, then the, the real tail end will would actually struggle and we won't have a problem. <laughs> but yeah, it it 
it's 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 it should be it should be an interesting one though. It should very be, be an interesting one. So once um England is scared and West Indies, even though losing that game is under ascendance, if you ask me. Because the fact that they came this close to I'm sure England probably won then, you know, they thought they had this one comfortably. So it should be an interesting one. There you have it, sports DTM fans. The West Indies changed their strategy after beating England badly in the first game and now end up on the losing end by just one run. Fans out there, we would love to hear from you by you leaving your comments in the comment section below. What's your thoughts on the West Indies performance? What's your thoughts on the lineup? Should the tail start later than at number five? Leave all those comments in the comment section below. And always remember to like, to share, and to subscribe. And to tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell all of them friends to come and join the Sports ETM family. This has been another episode of Sports Down the Middle. Ray, Adrian, and I signing out. Be blessed.